What's going on guys, my name is Ghost and welcome back to another video. So I hope you all have been enjoying these Dark Souls Remastered guides because I've got another one for you today. Now my first two, I had a lot of information to cover a wide variety of topics, so they were kind of long. But from now on, I think I'm going to be focusing on how to do one specific thing in each video, whether that be how to kill a certain enemy, a certain boss, where to get a certain item, and so on. In today's video, we're going to be going over the easiest ways to kill Taurus Demon. Now, if you're watching this video, I doubt Taurus needs much introduction. You probably already got smashed by his hammer. But don't worry, by the time this video is over, I promise it won't happen again. Now, I'm not sure how many of these boss guides I'm going to do. I'll for sure be covering any bosses that have some unique strategies that you can use, rather than just hitting them with your sword a whole bunch of times. But if there are any bosses along the way that you're having trouble with, let me know in the comments what they are and I'll let you know if I have a guide planned or not. And if not, I could definitely make one for you. So with all of these, I'm going to be going over a few different things. One, obviously, how to kill the boss, the different strategies that you can use. But also, if there's any prep work to do, any armor that you might want to pick up, any specific items. The best way to get there so you don't lose any health along the way and have full Estus for when you actually face them, and so on. So let's kick things off with Taurus Demon. So just in case you haven't actually faced Taurus Demon yet, I will start off with the basics. He's located in the Undead Burg and he's fairly close to the bonfire although there are quite a few enemies on the way. Now these enemies are entirely possible to run past, but most of them have pretty good tracking, some of them have these jumping attacks that can hit you from like 20 feet away. Others will try to poke you and they will not give up until they do. So you might have to be a bit creative with the route that you run if you are trying to get past all of these enemies without taking any damage. Now this is likely the first bonfire you've lit aside from Firelink Shrine, so it might not be a bad idea to kindle it. If you're not familiar with what kindling does, it actually adds 5 Estus to your total every time you set that bonfire. You might have noticed that every time you rest at Firelink Shrine, you get 10 Estus, whereas if you rest at this bonfire on the Undead Bird, you only get 5. To actually kindle, you're going to need 2 humanity. The first one is to turn you into a human, you rest at the bonfire and click reverse hobbling, because if you aren't human, when you try to kindle, you will get a message saying you cannot kindle while hollowed. The next humanity you'll actually spend on the kindling itself. Fairly self-explanatory, just click kindle and it will do everything else for you. Now, every time you rest of this bonfire, you'll have 10 Estus. Moving on, on the way to Taurus Demon, there is actually a chest that you may or may not have discovered. When you come up these stairs here and face these three hollows, right behind them, you'll see a wooden door. It is locked, but there are a couple of very easy ways to open it. First, with the master key, which of course you could pick as your starting gift from the very beginning of the game. And the second way is with the residence key. To get the residence key, you can go meet the Undead Merchant, which you can get to by following this path I'm taking on screen right now. You can either buy it from him for 1000 souls, or kill him and he will drop it. Now behind this door is a chest with three gold pine resins in it. What this item does is it adds lightning damage to your weapon, specifically 150 points of lightning damage, and it lasts for one minute. Now that's 150 damage on top of whatever physical damage your weapon was already doing. Needless to say, it's very, very powerful. Honestly, using it against the first few bosses in the game almost feels like cheating, you do so much more damage. In most cases, it will nearly double, if not triple, the amount of damage you're doing per hit. If Taurus Demon is giving you a hard time, try adding this to your weapon. You'll absolutely tear his health bar apart, and on top of that, it'll give you an increased chance at staggering him. You can easily stagger Taurus Demon if you have a weapon buffed with Gold Pine Resin. So that's all the prep that I can recommend doing before you actually enter the boss fight. There is a bit more though when you get inside. Once you go through the boss fog, you can turn straight around and go up this ladder right here. At the top of this tower, there are two archers that may have been bothering you if you already tried this fight. You can actually kill them though before the fight even begins, which is very, very nice. Now this tower serves a couple of extra functions, which brings us to our first method of killing Tar Steven, and that is the plunging attack method. So if you run about three quarters of the way down the bridge, you can actually bait Taurus Demon into jumping off of his tower. And if you watch the top of the tower, you can actually see him coming before he actually lands on the bridge and starts the boss fight. As soon as you see Taurus poke his head up, run straight back to the tower and climb up the ladder. Taurus will chase you back there and sit right at the bottom of the tower. At this point, you can jump off and hit him with a devastating plunging attack. You might remember doing this very same thing to the Asylum Demon earlier. 
Now, depending on what weapon you have and whether or not you actually used your gold pine resin, this might take down a quarter of his health, it might take down a third, it might take nearly half of it. This is how I personally like to start every single fight with Tars. There's really no risk involved whatsoever. As long as you're paying attention when he pops up from the tower on the other side, there's really no way that you won't safely make it back to this one. You should, however, be aware that if you sit up here for too long, Taurus Demon will jump up here and fight you. You can, of course, just do this first one, and then after that, fight him normally. If you have a Gold Pine Resin buff on your weapon, it's actually really easy to stun lock him after you've hit him with the first plunging attack. You can, however, continue to do plunging attacks until the boss is dead. To achieve this, after you land the first one, do whatever you can to get back around Taurus Demon. He'll never be standing in exactly the same spot after you hit that first plunging attack, so this part can be a bit difficult, sometimes he's blocking the way, sometimes he'll just backstep, which is very, very polite of him, you can thank him later. Other times, in the worst case scenario, he will actually try to attack you when you're stuck on the stairs right here, or even worse, next to the stairs, so just keep rolling and do whatever you can to get away. Once you do get away though, what I like to do is run anywhere between half and three quarters of the way down the bridge. Once again, there's no specific spot that will guarantee success here, but the basic idea here is to get Tars away from the tower with the ladder on it so you can go back up it. Once he's chased you down the bridge, bait him to attack you, dodge it, and run all the way back down the bridge and climb up the ladder as fast as possible. Sometimes Tars Demon recovers quickly from his attack, more quickly than other times, it's really kind of random. So, occasionally he will catch you as you're climbing up the ladder. If you have a decent amount of stamina, he shouldn't knock you off. If you are low on stamina, however, he might. If that happens, just get out of here once again, run down the bridge, and try it again. Since there can be some luck involved with getting back to the ladder before Tars catches you, I personally don't recommend using this method over and over again. However, like I said earlier, that first plunging attack is pretty much 100% safe. This is a good method to use though if you're not good at knowing when to dodge attacks and when to go in for damage. So the other method I have today is actually the Tars suicide method. Now the upside to this method is that you don't actually have to hit Tars once. All you have to do is focus on kiting him around and dodging his attacks. The downside is that sometimes this can take a little while to set up. As you might have guessed by the name, our goal here is to make Tars jump off the bridge. Just in case you can't get this to work though, I do like to start every single fight off no matter what strategy I'm using with that first plunging attack just to get rid of some of his health. That way if you give up on this, you'll only have about 3 quarters of Tars left to deal with, which isn't so bad. So to set this up, what you want to do is guide the Tars over to one of the edges of the bridge where the wall is broken. Be very careful though because it's really easy for Tars to knock you off the bridge too. There are two animations that Taurus has that will make him fall off. One of which is his leaping attack, where he squats down and then jumps at you. If you want him to do it this way, put your back to the edge of the bridge and have Taurus facing you, and when he jumps, roll between his legs and he should jump straight off. The one that I prefer, that I find to be a little bit more reliable and more likely to happen, is for Tars to backstep off the bridge. Now sometimes he'll backstep straight off, you'll see in this video though I actually get him to backstep, and then as he takes a slight step backwards with his next attack, that is when he actually falls off the bridge. So all you need to do here is keep dodging Taurus's attacks and try to get him as close as possible to the edge of that bridge. Now like I said before, I personally like to use the backstep method. To bait out the backstep, I like to get as close to Taurus as possible. This does make it a little bit harder to dodge some of his attacks, especially the one where he just slams his axe straight down, but I do feel like it makes him a bit more likely to try to backstep and get away from you. As you will see with this last clip though, Taurus actually takes a slight step backwards with some of his swings. So even if you can't get him to leap off or even backstep off, if you can get Taurus close enough to the edge, he might just fall off that way. Guys, that's all I have for this video as far as strategies. If you're really having trouble, try out one of these methods. Just analyze what is happening in your fight. Try to figure out why you're not beating him. If it's because you feel like you don't have room to dodge, try fighting him up top on the tower so that you have some more room side to side and don't get caught up on the walls. If you feel like you're not getting enough damage in, try out the plunging attacks. Again, you can mix those in. You can do the one at the beginning and you can try fighting him normally for a while. And then if you see an opening, you try to get another plunging attack later on in the fight. And if you're really desperate, you really can't kill Tars, just ask him to leave. As you saw in one of those clips, Tars politely showed himself off the bridge.
He's honestly not such a bad guy, just a bit misunderstood, I feel like. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out. Good luck with TARS, and I'll see you in the next one.